This is the air check. The air check. The air check with Mike Lemons. The air check with Mike Lemons. Hello and welcome to another edition of the air check. My name is Mike Lemons, and if you've watched the show before, you know that I like to catch up with students uh, who are making a name for themselves in this industry. And today, I'm excited because we're joined with a very recent graduate. Um, who graduated, I think, just a little over a year ago and now is full-time at 101 ESPN. So let's bring him in now. Without further ado, here is Tanner Hendrickson. Hey, Tanner, what's up, buddy? Not much. How you doing, Mike? I'm great. You know, so I don't think you've been in our studio since uh, we've changed it to this podcast studio, but you've been on uh, through this software many times before, I think, uh, uh, popping in on our sports show, I think, so. Yeah, I've been on this software a little bit. We got the new studios came after I left, which was weird timing, I must say. But yeah, well, you have to come back and check it out sometime because it's uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, so let's get into your career just a little bit. So once again, you are a student. Uh, you graduated in May of twenty. Um, am I right? That's May of last yes. year. Yeah. Um, but you had started it. Well, it wasn't an internship. It was really a part time job that you had at one hundred and one ESPN. And um, first of all, let me tell people what you do there. You're a producer for two different shows, uh, the De- the Danny Mac show with BK, um, and then uh, you produce the um, BK and Ferrario show. And we'll get into that just a little bit more. Um, but kind of take me through uh, what happened. You, you graduated here, but you started working part time at 101 ESPN. Um, and then you started doing some uh, board up work and then some part time producer work. So Take me through that process, if you would, a little bit. Yeah, so when I first started here at 101 ESPN, it was just as as simple as doing stuff overnight. It was doing, you know, we have a national feed of a Monday night football game or we have Sunday night football, baseball, stuff like that. So it was just the small overnight stuff, and you'd cut up a little bit of that audio and send it out to the shows at night. And then when the pandemic hit in 2020 in February, unfortunately, people had their jobs lost and I ended up coming in and filling in and started producing our morning show, uh, Character and Smallman. So I did that for a while, and then I kind of backed away from that when they brought in someone else full-time, went back to what I was doing. I started doing uh, Blues games, running board for Blues games and producing those when they went up to the bubble for the playoffs in, I believe that was around August when that occurred. And then after that, I started, we had another person leave the morning show, so I went in and filled in for that. And then after they brought someone else in after uh, two months, I'd say a little over that, I went to our midday show, which is where I am now, BK and Ferrario. And then it just kind of went from there. Me and the guys have a great chemistry. They let me on their show and talk uh, during the full three hours. And we added in the Danny Mac show with BK. And then I started adding that onto my resume. And that's basically where I've gone from there. And it led to full time, which I'm excited about. Now, couldn't be more excited for you. You are a sports director when you were here and you did a lot of broadcasting of games. Um, fantastic job. And it kind of led to the person who followed you to do a great job there too. But what I remember most about you, Tanner, is um, you were kind of impatient, right? I mean, you wanted things to happen. You wanted things to happen right now and couldn't understand why we wouldn't do sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I remember you being very tenacious to get to where you wanted to be. Now, most people would say in this business, for you to be full-time now at a large market station, um, and just a little over a year is pretty quick. Um, how would you describe uh, where you are now? And did you think the process was quick or did it not happen fast enough for you? I think the beginning of the process felt like it was going to take a long time. When I first started, I was doing, like I said, doing the small things where you're in the studio for three hours. But during the pandemic, when that started, it was, you know, there's not a lot of sports going on. So sports started to slowly come back. So there for a while, I was working six six hours a week maybe and i may have like 12 on my paycheck and on whatever the salary was the minimum wage was at the time i mean you look at that paycheck and you go oh wow i don't know if i can continue to do this so at that point it felt slow but then the moment i started getting into uh, producing the shows and being more heavily involved and booking the guests and kind of talking on the air a little bit then i felt like the process had sped up but even then i i don't think i could have predicted how fast it took how fast a track I took to becoming full time and signing that contract just a couple of weeks ago. So let's go through what you're doing now full time. So when we tell people you're a producer, anybody who's in this business kind of knows what that entails. Um, But before you tell me that you're producing a Dan McLaughlin show and 
that had to be something for you when you first started working with Danny. That this is somebody you grew up watching Cardinal baseball and seeing all the time. And now you're producing a show as a part timer that probably freaked you out a little bit. But now it's probably old hat and you probably text each other on the regular. Yeah, it, it was one of those where he is the only guy I've ever known that has covered Cardinals baseball on Valley Sports Midwest, used to be Fox Sports Midwest. And I, I used to watch basically every game uh, growing up. So he was someone that I was familiar with, knew the name, and never thought I'd really get the opportunity to let alone meet him, but also work with him. So getting that opportunity to work with him, it, it's been a blast. And I can remember the first time, I, I think he was coming in to do the crossover to do his show when I was doing the mornings at one point. And I knew that he was coming in and like all night I was just thinking, you know, what am I going to say? How can, how can I make sure that I'm kind of someone that he's going to remember? Because I thought it'd be something that he would do this with me for just while I was doing part-time. I never thought I'd be doing a show with him fully five days a week. So I was like, okay, what can I say to him? What, what, what can I say? What's, what's a good Cardinals thing that I could say that could kind of bring something up that maybe sticks out to him. Maybe he'll realize I have a good baseball mind. And I can't remember exactly what I said, but I think he, he said something like, yeah, I don't know about that. And I was like, oh, no, that was it. You ruined your opportunity. So, but yeah, it, it's fun to work with him every day and talk Cardinals baseball with him. And it's, it's a joy to work with him. I, like I said, I never thought I'd get this opportunity. And yeah, we'll text every now and then uh, talking about Cardinals baseball through the bad and through the good, but it's a blast to work with him every day. Now you also produce the BK and Ferrario show. And with that show, it's more than just producing. You're on it quite a bit. So you're almost like a, a, a third host on that show. And I hear you often talking about Cardinal baseball and, you know, to see the success you're having, knowing that you get to produce a show of a guy you've looked up to and Danny Mack all these years. And then now to be able to give your opinion uh, on a show with these other two guys and the chemistry is right. The chemistry is there and it's fantastic. That has to be pretty sweet, pretty special for you. Yeah. It's awesome that I get the opportunity to do it. I, because I didn't expect to have that opportunity kind of, I don't know if Gibbons the word to say, but I didn't expect to have the opportunity so fast. I figured I would come in and I would be the guy that, you know, you don't really hear from them behind the scenes. I push the buttons. I turn on their mics and play their audio and podcast the show for them, which I do. But I never expected them to be so willing to let me be included in their show. And it's, it's been a, it's been a blast to do it. They, they were willing to on day one. They said, hey, we've heard you talk behind the scenes about stuff. If you have an opinion, just feel free to turn on your mic and let's, let's talk about it. And I was very hesitant at first. And, and now it's to the point where there's probably times they wish that they could turn off my microphone because I'm talking a little too much for that third voice. Right. So it's kind of cool, though. I get into my to my vehicle. I'm driving. I have somebody with me. And I go, Shh, listen. This is Tanner. This is my student. So I get to brag on you quite a bit there, too. And I know a lot of people who listen. So congratulations on on your success. Take me through what producing a show is all about. Tell our tell our viewers what goes into uh, producing a show on 101 ESPN. So it, during Cardinal season, it's a heck of a lot easier, especially when you're doing an all baseball show, uh, the Danny Mac show with BK and then BK and Ferrario, you can mix in some blues hockey and stuff. So they don't have the issue of uh, potentially running out of topics due to a matter of, you know, there's nothing really going on. There's always something going on here in St. Louis sports wise, but I basically sit down at night and if there's a Cardinals game, I watch the Cardinals game and I try to pull away some of the main talking points from that. And if it's a blues game, I do the same thing. Like last night, the blues, uh, it was about the young kids. You got Jordan Cairo having a four point night. You've got Clem Costin scoring two goals. So, right there is a talking point. Okay, some of these young guys that we've talked about, I can jot that down. And I know at some point in our show, we're going to talk about it. And then I'll do that. I'll come up with multiple talking points for each sporting event. Or if there's something that I see in the news that's uh, uh, newsworthy, whether it be like the manager with the Cardinals, Mike Schilt, who's a candidate, or if it's hot stove, off season stuff, I will take that and I will type up an email at night that I'll send out around 11, 12 o'clock. It takes me about three hours to get stuff ready for a three-hour show and probably about an hour to get ready for a one-hour show that we do with Danny Mac. So that's the first part of it. I type up this email. I send it out so they can see it. And if there's anything that they say, you know, I don't know if I want to hit on that, they'll, they'll send that back to me, and we'll go from there, and we'll kind of communicate back and forth on the talking points. And then I come in into the studio in the morning, I kind of take what those talking points are, figure out what, what order I think is going to be good. What's the number one thing we need to open up with? What can we sandwich in between? I know we've got benchmarks. We've got interviews. How can I kind of order these to where it's in good fashion to where I think it's going to be for our best listenership? I'll do that, and then I'll get into our system, uh, and I will start looking through some of the audio that was sent to us by our overnight guy, and I'll say, okay, this is something that was interesting that was said. Now I can kind of 
use that, maybe enhance the story, and we can toss that if we want, or I'll look for it and maybe I'll add it into an open. Maybe I'll take some Cardinals highlights from the night before. Maybe there was a big home run, and then after that I'll take Mike Schilt's comment of it, uh, and I'll I'll add that to it so we can kind of enhance the storyline. And then after the show, after that, I have to podcast it so that it can be seen on our website. So I'll do that, and then I'll kind of grab – if there's something I think worthwhile that I think some of the that may intrigue the listeners to come back and listen to an interview if they missed it, I will grab a a comment from one of our interviewees and I will kind of attach it to a picture, type up a quick quote of it, and then post that on our social media. So then I'm then I'm basically done with my producer duty and then it basically starts right back up at night where I have to type up the notes and get ready for the next day. So your day is not punching the clock. It's not arrive in the morning, leave in the afternoon. It's 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 arrive in the morning after you prep stuff all night long. The shows get over. You produce a bunch of stuff for the podcast so you can upload those to social media throughout. And then you're watching and doing sports at night so that you're ready for the next day. Yeah, there's really just a like three-hour window, I think, by the time I get home that I can kind of relax and then get focused back in on what's going on. Because I'm usually in, in the studio. We go on air about 10. I'm in around 8.39, but I'm up at... Uh, 637 getting stuff ready at home then I come in grab our audio we go on air at 10 next show starts at 11 we're off at 2 and then it is going into the office and making the podcast so then I make the podcast do the audiograms by the time I leave here it's around 3 3 30 get home about 4 and then usually the sporting events start at 7 so I've got about a three hour window where I have just that little bit of relaxing time but as a guy that enjoys sports yeah, the non the nonstop stuff is just perfect for me because I I can tell you from the pandemic when there weren't a lot of sports going on I can tell you that I was very bored and didn't know what to do. Sure, but you know, and that's why you know I, I was going to start to say oh, I don't feel that sorry for you because you get to live what you love and you get to do sports and that has to be so rewarding and not that ESPN is going to be your final stop or this is you know where it's going to end because we'll talk about some play by play in a second. Um, but it has to be pretty cool. People, you know, what's the saying that if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So uh, you're getting to do that and you're getting to do it pretty quickly. So how's the ride been so far, man? I mean, are you really enjoying it? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been a blast, and especially because as a guy that grew up watching Cardinals and Blues hockey, I, I don't know if, and I don't want to say it, but I, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as quickly as I got into the business if it weren't the teams that I've grown up watching. I, I think there's kind of a bittersweetness to the fact that I'm still kind of a fan. I still root for the Cardinals to play really well. I still root for the Blues to be very play very well because it's fun to watch the teams and kind of react to it. Those dog days of June for the Cardinals this past year, I, we're reacting to it and it's fun to talk about. But as a fan, it's very frustrating to watch it. So you, there's the balance in that. But it. It's been awesome. I couldn't be happier with what I'm doing. And like you said, it, I enjoy my job so much that it doesn't really feel like I'm working a day in my life. You know, I've often thought about that because, you know, I love sports. Um, I don't love all the sports. And that's just it. That's why I could have never really done uh, commercial sports radio is because I loved, you know, baseball and I could talk about the NFL and I could talk uh, college football uh, enough to get me in trouble talking about hockey. But after that, you know, I don't know that my interest would be there when those seasons weren't happening. You know, if they overlapped, like hockey and baseball, perfect. Um, but what about even going to another city? You know, I grew up a Cardinal fan too. So to leave somewhere and go to Chicago and then talk about, you know, the Cubs and the Blackhawks and the White Sox, and uh, that would be difficult, but that's the job. It's really no different than being on an alternative rock station and then going to a country station, right? I mean, that's something that you think you might be able to do that transition if the opportunity to go to one of those larger markets comes up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I could do that transition. It, it would just take it just take some time in learning to adjust to it because each city there's the different uh, sport that dominates. And here in St. Louis, our, our number one thing is we're always going to be successful when we're talking Cardinals baseball. And, and that's the same with the Blues, but the Blues are a little bit behind that on Cardinals baseball because the city of St. Louis – has it is a baseball city and hockey's right behind there. But if you go to Chicago, for example, football is the big thing there. They have a sport in all five major sports here in the U.S. You just have to kind of learn what becomes more of a talking point. And in the city of Chicago, it would be football compared to here in St. Louis that it is baseball. And then in certain other cities, it's hockey or it's soccer, depending on where you are. So there's just that little adjustment, and that would take some time. But I, I could absolutely do that heading to another spot if, if I had to. 
Now, you came here, you did a lot of play-by-play play for us, and that was something that you really wanted to do. And I know that was something you were concerned about when you went to 101 because you didn't know if the opportunities to do much play-by-play play would be there. Obviously, you're having great success full-time at a large market sports talk radio station. Um, but you're getting to do a little bit little bit of play-by-play. Play. Fill us in on uh, what, what you're doing now there. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of dip my toe back into the water on doing some play-by-play. Play. I just recently, in the last couple of weeks, have uh, joined PrepCast, which is a streaming service for high school sporting events. And they also do a little bit of middle school stuff, as I know this week, and I think I've got a middle school football game on the ledger for Saturday. So I get to go back and do some of the high school sports that I kind of covered when I was at LC. We did a little bit of uh, college soccer and college sports there at Lewis and Clark as well. And I just enjoy doing the play-by-play, -play, getting prepped for it, kind of. I don't know the kids, and I don't know really the families that are involved with the game, but I enjoy kind of looking at some of the numbers and saying, okay, this kid's playing really well. I remember what it was like to play in high school sports. I, I enjoyed that our games were on the radio, so I want to do that for them so that their families can listen to it. And I'm glad that I'm, I've just joined uh, PrepCast to possibly to do that and continue doing that for this season and hopefully in the couple of years to come. Oh, and it's got to be nice as you're doing that. I know there are several people around you uh, besides just Danny Mac who are doing play-by-play -play and doing different things. So a lot of people that you can kind of bounce stuff off of and ask for advice. And, you know, I don't know that you've ever had that conversation with Danny Mac about suggestions on how to advance your 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 play-by-play. -play, but uh, it's got to feel pretty good, though, knowing that um, there's several sounding boards in your office that you can talk to. Yeah, that, that's the great thing about being here at 101 ESPN is there's, uh, there's such great talent here that I'm able to bounce, whether it's ideas for our shows, I can bounce that off of them and not be afraid of it, or whether it is asking someone to listen to some play-by-play -play and just say, hey, you know, what What are your thoughts on this? How can I get better? Because that there, that's the ultimate goal is to get better in my career. I know I'm very young, and I know I'm fortunate to be at, at the stage that I am at 22 years old to be full-time in a – uh, major market in the city of St. Louis doing radio. So I, I am not hesitant to ask for help to do stuff because I know I'm not the best one to do it. And I know that I'm nowhere close to near the top and that is the ultimate goal. So I'm not afraid to ask for the ideas and everybody here at 101 ESPN is so helpful when I come up and ask them questions. They always have answers for me and it's great. I'm going to kind of plant this seed now as we're talking about other things, but I, I want to ask you about some of your favorite moments uh, at ESPN or what's been really cool, or maybe it's not one, maybe it's just um, uh, something you do every day as a part of the show. So I'll ask you that in a minute. So kind of be thinking about uh, what story you might want to share. I want to go back to your time here uh, at Lewis and Clark. And, you know, we interview a lot of students that have had great success in this program. And that's where we're very fortunate is that we can point to people like you and others throughout the years. Um, you're probably one of the more recent grads to do that with. Um, so that's pretty cool that, that we're talking to you so soon. But take me to your time here. What do you remember about Lewis and Clark? Uh, what will you take away from it? Um, not looking for praise of the program or what you learned, but take me through your time here and maybe how that sets you up for what you're doing now. Well, I know when I first came to Lewis and Clark that I didn't really have intentions of joining the radio program because I originally came to Lewis and Clark on a tennis scholarship. And my idea was to play tennis and then for two years there and then go transfer. And then when I saw or learned that you guys had a radio program at Lewis and Clark, I knew I had to join that because I knew I wanted to be involved in sports and I couldn't have been set up better. I mean, everything that I learned at Lewis and Clark, I basically use here at work. For example, I mentioned a little bit earlier about how I'm, coming in and grabbing audio for our shows, I use Adobe Audition, and that's what I learned at Lewis and Clark. Uh, I learned that, I, I think, in my first year there. So that's something that's continued on with me, learning to have a personality. I can remember doing – I'm not the biggest music fan, so me being on an alternate rock station was something that I knew I was going to have to kind of learn and get better at because I know after a couple times on air, I, you, I think you told me I needed more personality. And – I tried to take that with me and bring that with me here to 101 ESPN and try and connect with listeners at 101 ESPN, trying to have my own personality, kind of have my own persona that people can kind of connect with. So every everything that I learned at Lewis and Clark, I've basically taken with me, projection and all that. I can remember you sending me to the corner one day and having me turn around and read a script. I can't remember <laughs> what the script was, but you said, hey, you need to you need to do this like your PA announcer. 
and I was talking. And you said, "Okay, now turn around and face the corner." And then I started reading. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So yeah, I remember. I remember that. And I also remember coming in the office a lot and just showing you my sports schedule. Hey, this is what I want to broadcast. Well, we got to trim it down. I, I knew that that comment yeah. was going to come a lot, and I think you yeah. got used to that. Right. I, I love the fact that you wanted to do so much sports, but it was an alternative rock station, right? People don't listen to us for sports. Yes. We are a lab first, and we wanted to give you those opportunities to to do those play by play things, and plus. You know, Tanner, it puts you out in the community, and the community got to see our radio station in action, and, and that always leads to people knowing about our program in the station. So so I appreciate that. And no, I didn't – I may have stuck you in a corner, but it wasn't a disciplinary thing. It was a uh, <laughs> – let's hear your voice and travel. You know, I, I, I preach projection a lot, and those who can project, a lot of the other things get fixed automatically when you project. So that's something that we kind of we kind of harp on uh, quite a bit. Um. Any other stories? You know, we've talked uh, sports a lot. I'm a big college football fan. You're a college football fan. and Well, you're a fan in general. Uh, we would talk sports quite a bit, and I know your sports show, guys, you would talk sports. And I even appeared on your show to do um, uh, some sports and talking about uh, college football. I remember those times. So uh, tell me some other times, something you learned or, or something uh, you think of back when you were here in college. I can remember us uh, doing the sports show every day with Nathan, who was our program director, Nathan Piercy. And like you said, yeah, you came on. I think you were our college football insider for us uh, when we were doing the sports show. And I remember, my, I think my favorite moment from Lewis and Clark was, as you've mentioned, I got to do some play-by-play, -play, and it's lab first at Lewis and Clark. So I got the experience. What You'd let us cover the Lewis and Clark uh, men's and women's soccer teams. And the LC women's team was really good the year that I was there and they ended up going to the national tournament and we covered them in regionals and I think in districts and we talked with the athletic department and the athletic department sent us with the soccer team and we got to be in Florida for a full week in Melbourne Florida for a full week and I believe February is when it was or something along those or November or December somewhere in that range and we got to cover this women's soccer team for a whole week we got to be down in Florida experience kind of what broadcasters do when they're doing play-by-play. -play. So that's probably one of my favorite memories was doing that. And then I can remember forcing uh, Nathan. I told him, if we get back in time on that Saturday, we're going to do a sports show. I was up on the bus getting stuff ready for the show. And sure enough, we got in. I think it was about 20 minutes before the show was supposed to start, and he couldn't believe that I made him do that. So that was one of my favorite memories. And I can always remember the fun music meetings as well. I remember coming into those, and we'd have a blast listening to music. I, I'd always vote too, but because I was a sports guy, it was kind of, okay, he's just kind of voting. But yeah, it, we just, it was always fun to be in that. We just kind of let you vote. We didn't really factor it into the equation on whether that song got played or not. But, you know, we wanted you to feel like, you know, you were part of something there. Yeah, and I, I enjoyed the music. Because I can also remember because me and Nathan were always in touch that you always joked around with me and said, you're the associate program director. I said, no, no, not my title, not on paper. And then what did I see one day? I walked by your office and on a yeah. piece of paper, there it is, sports director slash associate PD. And I went, <laughs> all right, I guess I'm locked into that role now. So I continued on in that role of uh, football, college football insider with uh, with Ethan Hannaford, who, who took over sports director when you left. And, you know, I just... I know the BK and Ferrario show, you guys don't talk uh, college football that much. So, you know, if you ever need an insider and you're the producer, I could be someone you could lean on there if you wanted to, Tanner. I got you. I'll get you connected <laughs> with the guys. We'll see if we can get something going. No, I'm just kidding. So tell me about your most fun at, at ESPN. Is it, is it just the day-to-day -day particular parts of the show, or was it being at an event and going, man, I can't believe I'm sitting here with this person and this person doing this. So what comes to mind, and could you share with, with uh, our viewers – and our listeners, uh, what working at ESPN has been like and if there's been a, a memorable moment. Well, my, the very first memory that comes to mind for me is I think the first time that I met uh, Brad Thompson, former Cardinals pitcher. He works on the fast lane. And uh, now I know him as BT because I've gotten to talk with him every day. And I can remember at Lewis and Clark, we did the five-minute shows. And I did mine on Sportscasters in Missouri. And I interviewed him, and I got so excited getting the chance to interview a guy that I grew up watching and Brad Thompson won a 2006 World Series with the Cardinals. So I can remember being so excited to just interview him. And then when I got the chance to meet him in person, that was awesome, along with uh, Jamie Rivers, who's a former Blues defenseman. It was awesome to meet him. But I, I think the number one thing that stands out to me in my time here at 101 ESPN so far has been being able to go out to some of these live events. Uh, I know in the one of the photos that you saw in the intro here was a photo of me at, uh, yeah, this photo right here. I'm at, uh, I'm trying to remember, Budweiser Bash is where we are, Budweiser Pavilion, just outside of Bush Stadium. 
And that was the first event that I really got to go out to and be involved in. And that was such a cool moment to where I get to travel. We got to see kind of the Cardinals game from uh, basically from Ballpark Village. So that was a lot of fun. And you get to see some of the people that listen to the show. And I don't think I ever realized how many people how many people listen to us and kind of enjoy listening to the show until I went on, went out to that event. And we, we did another one this past Friday at Copper Fire, and I got to meet former Blues defenseman Bear Jackman, who I uh, grew up watching as well, former Blues defenseman. So that was a lot of fun. But connecting with the listeners when we're out there, they come up and they say, oh, can I get a photo with you guys? And I love listening to your guys' show, and I love when you guys talk about this. I love the banter going back and forth. And I don't think it really struck me how many people are – listening to us on a daily basis till I go out there and then we run into people and we ha- we talk with a bunch of the listeners, a bunch of the fans for, I think we were there at Copper Fire and at the Ballpark Village event, maybe two, three hours after our show had ended, just talking with people that enjoyed listening to the show. And I, I really take a lot of pride and I enjoy seeing that people enjoy listening to us and that they want to talk with us and be willing to come up to us and ask us some questions. I enjoy that a lot because I, 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 that's the number one goal with us at 101 ESPN is connect with listeners, sure. kind of become a well-known uh, name that they can come up and don't don't hesitate to come ask you a question. And I enjoy that. that that's been the, my number one favorite thing so far is the two events that I've gotten to go to and meet some fans and meet a couple of former players. Yeah, just a few more listeners at 101 ESPN than, <laughs> than what you would have had here at, at Lewis and Clark in 89.9. But yeah, I mean, that's got to be that's got to be pretty cool to do that. Tanner, man, I can't thank you enough for joining us, and um, congratulations on your success so far. Uh, I, you haven't been a stranger. You've helped out our sports shows that you've been there, so I appreciate that uh, very, very much. Good luck to you, man, and uh, let that career continue to soar, and um, keep entertaining us with your thoughts and insight on, on everything St. Louis sports. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. Never be a stranger. Don't reach out. I'm always willing to help 89.9. I appreciate it. I'm Mike Lemons. That's Tanner Hendrickson. Thank you for joining us on the Air Check.